I've worked with hundreds of high school students throughout my decade long career as a college and career coach, and I know the key to a successful student, and I'll be sharing just that, so stay tuned. Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany Fu. I'm a certified college and career coach. I help high school students all the way up to professionals figure out what their career path could look like and students apply to college as well. I share tons of helpful content around college and career, so make sure you go ahead and subscribe and share this channel with anyone else you think might find this helpful. Before we dive into the content, let's do a quick trivia. What do you think is the average college GPA of millionaires? Go ahead and put your answer in the comments down below to let us know what you're thinking. All right, well, the answer is A, 2.9 GPA. And according to the book of Millionaire Mind, they found no statistical correlation between economic productivity and academic performance. And the reason why I bring this up as a question is actually the key to success is not quite in your academic slash GPA. It's a huge component of it, but it's not the key. And I'll go into this a little bit further. And the answer is students know what their why is. They define what exactly is their motivation. They shape their mindset to stay motivated. And the way that a lot of students have done this is first really reflecting on how they want to live their lives, how they want to envision themselves in their future. And by doing that, that's how they're able to start having more at stake and reasons to get up in the morning early for school, do that homework assignment, and complete a lot of the responsibilities that they have. Second is they internalize it. They really understand and believe that they want this for themselves. Seeing others achieve, so when you have students that are friends with upperclassmen, that's always really helpful because they see that they're striving and achieving, getting into schools, landing that internship. And with that social proof, that really helps them realize they can do this. And the third step for this is to document this down. Write down what it is that motivates you. And I can't stress this enough because people who do this are 42% more likely to achieve their goals and dreams. That is a crazy statistic that is proven by Dr. Gail Matthews, a psychology professor at Dominican University. So I've done this for myself. I write down my goals, I take a screenshot of it, save it as my background on my phone, on my computer, and it's extremely helpful that it helps remind you what your goals are. So that's that fourth step. Don't forget it. Find ways to keep yourself optimistic, reminding yourself of the possibilities of this future for yourself. So these students are constantly striving and working hard to be successful. And these are key methods to identify a student's why relative to their career interests. So first, introspection, which is exactly what we talked about in the last slide. And then another is taking assessments. And these are beyond just the typical career assessments. You can do interest assessments, strengths, figuring out what your aptitudes are. There's plenty of different resources and career assessments. I'll link them in the description down below so you can take your pick. And if you have a student that is unsure of their desired career interests and what they want to do in college, go ahead and reach out to me. You can find my information down below in the description because I have tons of tips and tricks to walk students from A through Z in how to plan for their career path through post-secondary education. Another method is to take on more responsibilities. And I've seen the most successful students just be really open-minded to all the opportunities that are out there. Hey, if it's not your ideal job, but that's your pretty much only option, strap up your boots and go take on the challenge. And there's so much to learn from these experiences as well. And these responsibilities can be outside of the norm. It doesn't have to be a club officer role. It doesn't have to be a job. It can be taking on responsibilities as the older sibling or taking on that responsibility within your religious institution or stepping up to do a project. There's a lot of informal ways to exercise these responsibilities. Lastly, talk to professionals, have these informational interviews, learn more about what it takes to be in these different career fields if you're starting to determine some of your interests. Be curious and build that genuine connection with others because this is a lifelong skill set that you'll need to continue to be flexing as you evolve in your different career. 
Once these successful students start identifying what their interests are, they demonstrate these through extracurriculars. Students get involved in school, outside of school. It can be anywhere from sports, clubs, band, tutoring. And then these outside programs could be externships, shadowing opportunities, seasonal programs, which I know the summer's coming up. A lot of opportunities arise for high school students in the summer because they have more time off. And then they also can do their own projects. Oftentimes this is pretty impressive, if not even more, because you're taking that initiative and having the unusual promise for leadership as we just talked about in the comprehensive college reviews. You can create nonprofit, a YouTube channel, hobbies. How can you really dive deeper and creating an impact in your community and those around you? And then of course, articulating the value of their impact. I've seen successful students do a great job of seeing at the big picture, what is this impact and value that you bring to these different opportunities? And then they are able to showcase that through their resume, applications, and this usually is a very logistical step. The hardest part that they have to do is to figure out what type of impactful work they want to focus on because there's only so much free time that they have outside of studying for school and these homework assignments. So as long as you're being intentional of what you're getting involved in, and this is a crucial skill set because there's only so much time within a day and the more strategic in prioritizing and efficient students are in creating their impact, that is a great way to demonstrate what they bring to the table for these colleges and future careers. Let me give you a real example of students I've worked with. Students are from their senior year that I haven't had opportunities to work with them previously. So this is kind of what we had to work with. And as a reminder, it's, it's not how many extracurriculars you're involved in, it's the impact that you make. So the student on the left has a 3.89 compared to the student on the right, which is 3.79. And the one on the left worked on a really intense research project. So this is the niche that the student was interested in, which is biotechnology. And they worked on a cancer research project leveraging technology. And then health education president, field hockey captain, health and fitness blogger that made tons of different articles during the time that they were involved with this group. Outcome, MIT, John Hopkins, UIUC, USC. So really great schools and it's evident because of the type of impact that the student was able to make. The one on the right, not taking away from them, had a lot of different involvement. However, they could have spent more time being more impactful, having more of a leadership role. So club officer, black belt, which is still really good, club member, team member, program participant. So you're kind of getting the drift here, right? Volunteer, member, participant, Penn State, University of Minnesota, University of Arizona, still great schools. And I'm not taking anything away from this student once again, but I see the opportunity. You can see the clear differences in the outcomes. And obviously, this is just a small component of the application process. I'm just highlighting the importance of quality versus quantity. So key takeaways is first, there's no standard profile. Every student is very different and unique. There's varying different interests. So follow those strengths and they usually lead to very productive activities to demonstrate your interests. And then second, the key to the student success is owning their own success. When students are in that driver's seat, the best outcomes will arise time and time again. That is true. Third is to start now. You have the power of this knowledge. So develop a roadmap to take that action. And taking that action is the most important step and oftentimes difficult because there's so much social pressure, anxiety, parental pressure on students. They get paralysis by analysis where they just get so bogged down and stressed out. So taking that first step is so key. And of course, have fun, be curious. Not one thing will be the end all be all. There's always options, okay? All right, go ahead and comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think this is the key to success? Do you agree with some of the advice that I've been giving? And if not, what do you think is the key to success? Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I'll see y'all next time.